Hey everybody, welcome back to TTWM, Tinker Tractor Welder Mechanic, where we don't know what we're doing, but we try the best we can. Today, we're going to see if that will pull that. Stick around and see if we can break our tractor. We got the got the cutter hooked up to the tractor. As you could see, we had had some adjustments. It comes with a just with the trailer jack right here, but because the tractor the draw bar is so low, we we didn't have enough adjustment in the um, with the jack to lower it down enough. So what we actually had to do, we actually had to go to the shop and get some two by eights to be able to drive the tractor on so that was fun the it's got a safety chain here that ties the bush hog to the to the tractor just like a regular trailer i've added these tie down d rings onto my draw bar mount so it actually makes a really nice place to mount that safety chain there so that was handy um but it it hooked up fine all right delman so now what's the next step so we've got it hooked up but then but you're gonna have to Start the tractor and start your hydraulics and lift it. Okay, so we Take so we so we bring the wings up. Yeah. Then we undo. I guess we undo this that pin one. on either side, yeah, and, and, and then this lock comes over to right here. Yeah. Okay, so and you can see both sides are. Here's a cylinder lock. You undo the pin, and you put it right here. All right, easy enough. So it's so th these hydraulics. They're a, a single acting hydraulic, right? Yeah. Because there's only one line, yeah. so you put the so you put hydraulic pressure to it to raise it up, and then you release hydraulic pressure to to bring the wings down or to lower the wheels, yeah. right? So let's kind of go over the specs and why we think, why I think that this is going to work. This cutter is a Titan model 1912. So that means that it's a 12 foot flex wing or bat wing cutter. Titan calls it a flex wing. The, you know, of course the normal parlance is, is a bat wing because of how it folds up. My father-in-law, it belongs to my father-in-law, and he normally pulls it with this tractor, a Coyote RX7320. Obviously, my CK4010 is a little bit different tractor than that RX7320. 
But on to why I think that this will actually work. So this Titan 1912, it is rated by Titan to be a 35 horsepower minimum PTO implement. The Coyote CK4010, so mine is a hydrostat, it has 33.5 horsepower at the PTO. So obviously it doesn't quite meet the spec, but I think we've all seen the video from Mike Schramke of Larry Stovesend, where he's pulling one of these cutters with a 3510 that's a gear transmission. So I think that the 3510 is rated for something like 31 horsepower at the PTO. So I've got a couple more horsepower. Um, his, his tractor did fine. We're in a little bit different environment though. We've got a full stand of hay that we're cutting. So it's gonna be just a, you know, it's gonna be a, a much tougher scenario as well as we've got some hills to pull. So while I wasn't quite worried about the PTO horsepower, what I was really worried about was the weight. So this cutter, according to Titan's website, weighs 2,630 pounds. My tractor, the CK4010, so with the combination of the tractor, the loader, and then I've got loaded tires, weighs about 4,058 pounds. So it is a good bit heavier than this cutter, but people have said, oh, you know, tractors are too small. You don't want the cutter to push you around. So when I checked the Coyote, my Coyote CK4010 operator manual, I actually found the max trailer loaded weight rating, which is 3,000 kilograms. So when you do the math, that equals 6,613 pounds that this tractor can pull from the draw bar. And so I feel, I already felt pretty safe because I use my three-point hitch to move around my gooseneck and my gooseneck weighs about 4,500 pounds. So I really wasn't worried about that. And of course, with this being connected directly to the draw bar, it's a much safer, better connection. When I move my gooseneck, I've got my three-point trailer hitch connected here to my hitch arms, and they're gonna be up a little bit. So of course, that's gonna, um, that has the possibility of tilting your tractor back as well. So I was pretty safe. I felt pretty confident in being able to pull this, just knowing with my experience with pulling my gooseneck, but the numbers, you know, really kind of told me, you know, that I'm not gonna have any problem at all. So this 1912 flex wing cutter from Titan again, um, it's rated for a two inch cutting capacity. So it'll cut trees, bushes, brush up to two inches. And then the cutting height is one and a half to 12 inches. So my father-in-law here, he's got all of these lock rings right here. That's what sets your height, um, your minimum height for the, for the tires. So it's, he said it, for cutting pretty high he likes to cut everything you know leave a lot of leave a lot of stock on the hay because that's really what we're cutting we're cutting hay um a hay field that they just didn't cut they they do 400 bales or so a year so the rest of the property he just maintains with the cutter so a lot of you may say back to talking about the pto requirements the pto horsepower like we said, we're not meeting the PTO horsepower minimum requirements. And actually on Titan's website in their sales brochure, they even specify 35 PTO horsepower gear drive trans. So I was curious about that. So I called Titan Tech Support and asked them, you know, hey, is, is using a hydrostat transmission gonna, gonna tear the tractor up or whatever? And they said, no, we just put it there so that people know that the HST robs a little bit more horsepower that they can't just run like a 35 horsepower tractor. So that makes sense. So again, I've kind of got the blessing from Titan, essentially, I mean, not really, but you know, just talking with Titan tech support that this tractor should be able to pull it. So let's see if it will. All right, so the moment of truth. So it looks like I can pull it, at least out of the parking space. So let's take it to the field and see what it looks like.
right, so we were able to pull it actually to the start of the field. This is the field we're going to mow. It's maybe, I don't know, a couple acres or so down to the, basically it's just, you know, exactly what you see. It's just a rectangle down this way. So it's not going to be too bad. We were going to try to mow another field, which is down the hill here, but we decided to, to let, um, you know, caution be the better part of valor right now and mow the actual flat part it, about three quarters of the way through the field it actually goes down a, a gentle dip so it's not that bad but you can see how tall the grass is so this grass comes up to my belly or so so it's a good three foot or so of grass it's not you know definitely not short I think the other video that was shown with the 3510 pulling it was really not much more than than mowing, you know, grass. So we think that this will definitely be more of a challenge. So there were three things I was worried about, right? The first thing is, would it actually hook up? We had a little bit of a challenge there, but it worked out. It was We were able to hook it up. The second thing that I was worried about is would it actually pull it? So we've, we've proven that it'll actually at least physically pull it. Now the third thing, well actually I guess there's four. The third thing is will the PTO turn on? So let's see if the PTO turns on. Okay, so we proved that the PTO will actually turn on. So now, let's see how, how much it'll mow. Make sure we put it in low gear. I think low gear is going to be the choice for this operation. We'll make sure to set our RPM up to 540. fluctuating because it's not used to this load on it. You can see I'm only maybe 50 feet or 100 feet in, but it's definitely mowing it. I mean, we've got, you know, it's probably not doing as good a job as what, what a bigger tractor would do. And you can see just exactly how thick it is over here. I mean, look at all that. But I think we've got a proof of concept. So now let's just mow. So the first thing I've noticed is it's kind of odd. You can see where the three decks are. This is going to be the right hand deck, center deck, left hand deck. And you can tell the left hand deck is clear. 
the center deck and the right hand deck pass are all have all the the uh, the clippings kind of within themselves so we're not really sure why that's happening something to keep an eye on I mowed that first few hundred feet in low gear and it did fine so let's try this next little bit in medium see what happens That was another hundred feet or so in medium. I was able to, in low, I was able to set my cruise, but in medium, I just didn't feel comfortable. I could tell that the, that the cutter was bogging down a little bit. You can see there's a little bit of chunks, chunkiness here in this region with all the, with all the cuttings. So, I don't really think there was an appreciable difference in the cut in low versus medium but I just feel more comfortable probably in low so I'm um, one because I can actually set cruise control so let's just see how that works um, what I'm going to do it uh, looks like I'm maybe a hundred feet from the end of the field so I'm just going to go down do a head row up here and then come down the other side and then we'll go all the way back down to the hay barn and we'll just do circles like that so that I don't have to turn tightly because there's not much clearance here on the three point hitch.
So we've got the upper field mowed. I didn't measure it before we started, but we think it's somewhere around two acres. Took me maybe 30 to 40 minutes or so to mow it, but that's also doing it without great efficiency, probably like 83% efficiency, because I left about two feet on the outside deck um, that I overlapped the, the previous cut. So really, um, I was kind of paying attention to the gearbox on that outside deck uh, kind of putting that the gearbox over my line so that gives us probably about 10 feet of cutting width so again 10 out of 12 it's like 83 percent kind of efficiency so not the most efficient cut whatsoever but we we got it done like say 30 to 40 minutes 45 minutes something like that now i'm gonna i'm gonna think about going down to the lower field uh, see how big that is see how long it takes me for that it's going to be way, way more challenging because it got a good elevation change to it. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it works there. I just want to point out how clean my radiator screen is here. You can see all of the seed pods and stuff. Um, I stopped several times to clean all the seed pods off of my intake grill area. Um, but even though I was mowing in you know three to four foot material i really didn't have any overheating issues or anything and um looks like that these that these plastic grills here really did their job um you know of not sucking and not allowing those seed pods to get sucked up into that radiator screen you can see here on the deck i mean i've got a good inch of seed pod material there so it's not like i wasn't in <laughs> wasn't in material that had the seed pods of things it's just that that coyote did a pretty good job of filtering everything out this is the lower field this is the main field you can see the house over here but you can see this this portion right here uh, is is significantly higher than the rest of the field i would say there's a good 8 to 10 to 12 feet elevation drop from this corner to that corner over there. Of course, you're not mowing that corner. You're, you know, you're going up. But then from this corner over here, coming up is going to be might be an incredible strain on this little 40 horsepower hydrostat. You can see kind of how it goes down here. So this block is a good bit bigger than that upper field that we mowed. And you can see the neighbors over there, they've done their round bales and they're just sitting in the field uh, waiting to be put up. But also from this corner up is gonna be a pretty good elevation change. But I think maybe what I'll do is I'll probably start at this corner and then go down because this, you know, this appears to be the biggest elevation change. So I'll go down and around and around and back up because this doesn't look like as as bad as bad of a pool So I made it about uh, three quarters of the way, maybe seven eighths of the way around this field. And I just had to give up. So I didn't have to give up, I guess, but you know, discretion is the better part of valor, right? So let me show you what, uh, what happened here. So as you can see from the time lapse, I started kind of in the upper corner and I was going down the hill about um, right in this neighborhood. I could tell that this grass is significantly thicker than the grass in the upper field. So right right there around around where that curve is, I could kind of tell that I might be in a bit of trouble. So, but I made it down this end, down that end, and there there's kind of you can I don't know if you can tell or not, but there's kind of a darker spot in the grass. Uh, that was super thick, so I kind of had my worries there. Made it up this side, but then coming up this side here, 
you can tell it's it's a bit of a slant but also an uphill pull so I think those all of those combinations combined with just the amazing thickness of the grass is what stopped me right down there so let's see where I stopped so that Coyote CK4010 it's 540 PTO setting is about 2600 rpm so as we were coming down through or as i was coming down through and getting into the thickest part of the grass i dropped down to about 1800 or so um and i could just tell that that it wasn't going to recover i, I was in too thick material for it to be able to recover at all so that's why i decided to go ahead and get out of the cut on on the upper field there even though it was some some pretty decent hay and it had a couple good uphill pulls the 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 lowest that i dropped in rpm was maybe like 150 200 rpm something like that so it went anywhere near the six eight hundred rpm drop that i experienced on this part of the field so that's the main reason why that i why that i decided to cut this field short or cut the cutting of this field short as it were uh you can see how thick how thick this material is i mean look at that it's just it's just handfuls right just super super thick material everywhere just this is where they get most of their hay from this field so you know it's it's been fertilized it's been well taken care of it's just they don't use much hay so they they don't cut the entire thing you can see over here um, you can see the round bales that the neighbors cut but the rest of this field all except for of course the yard but the rest of this field and there's a it's you know twice again down uh, on the on the other side of the hill that you can see there but they cut all the hay that they need from that side and they just he just takes care of this you know to mow so it's it's super good super thick material the field up here on the other side is not you know they don't really get the hay from there but you can just tell you can just see just how how thick the material is so i got you know quarter half three quarters of the way and then this is maybe I don't know a quarter of the way so three quarter and yeah whatever three quarter plus round I just decided that it's not worth tearing up the tractor uh, for a test so that's kind of where we are we'll go ahead and park the bat wing today and we'll hook up the RX 7320 to it and finish the rest of this okie dokie because the trusty old CK4010 there um, didn't do a great job, uh, did a you know did a did a decent job on the first part. We're now bringing in the big dog, the 7320. So let's see how it does. Let's let's talk a little bit about do a comparison for them too. So you can see there's there's a good bit of size difference i mean it's it's not even they're not even in comparable classes the 4010 the ck 4010 is two frame sizes below the rx 7320 so after the ck 10 series you've got the dk series and then the nx series then after those two then comes the RX 7320, well, the 6620 and 7320. So it's, you know, it's really three frame sizes bigger, two frame sizes between them. You can see it's a, it's a huge difference between the two machines. When this, when this cutter was hooked up to my tractor, the, the safety chains were dragging the ground. And now we've got probably six to eight inches now of ground clearance hooked up to the RX7320. So again, so the RX7320 
what that signifies is that signifies a 73 horsepower engine machine the ck4010 is a 40 horsepower uh, 40 engine horsepower machine i've got 33 and a half horsepower at the pto this tractor has 63 horsepower at the pto this tractor is a three range hydrostat this tractor is a 12 by 12 power shuttle tractor so what that means is it's got four gears and three ranges so whereas i was able to mow with the ck4010 in low gear i'm going to mow with this one probably somewhere in mid-range and probably um when we when we cut hay last week we cut hay at uh, mid at mid range fourth gear so really that's like eighth gear um so i'll try that out to see how the rx 7320 does with the 1912 titan uh, flex wing so that'll be kind of where i start with of course the mower that we were using for hay is a crone uh crone 240 active mow but anyway, it translates to about, uh, an, I think, a nine-foot cut on it. So that's pretty much going to be about right here on this tractor. So it'll take a little bit more to, to cut with this bush hog. So maybe, I don't know, mid-range second gear. Let's see how, how this one does. So now we're kind of to the area all in through here was where it was bogging my tractor down in low gear. So it would go from 2600 RPM down to 1800 RPM. And you can see kind of where it's thick right here and then where I kind of got out of the cut up there. So let's go ahead and see what this RX7320 does. We'll watch the RPMs while we go through this, this thick section. And again, we're in medium range and we're in second gear.
about an hour later we got this six acres finished up with the rx7320 did a great job absolutely great job now let's talk about what we learned so we learned a few things with this experiment the first thing that i learned is i need a canopy on my ck4010 it's a great device you would think living in florida for the last 13 years uh, the last four years that i've owned the tractor that i would have realized that a canopy is a good invention i mean most of the time that i did work with my tractor it was in the woods cleaning up logs and fallen trees and stuff like that so i always had the canopy over me with the with the trees so but now out here doing field work you need a canopy uh, even better you need a cab so that's the that's the first thing that we learned is spring for the canopy or spring for the cab you won't regret that the second thing that i learned is there is a correct tool for every job right here this rx 7320 is the correct tool for a 12 foot flex wing bat wing rotary cutter bush hog mower the so the the overall impressions of the ck4010 can it do it yes it absolutely can uh i wouldn't if if you're like if you're in a situation like we are uh, the father-in-law has the 7320 right now i've got my ck4010 here at his place if for whatever reason his rx7320 broke down or was just you know in use somewhere else for something else uh, the CK4010 could possibly run the mower. It's not the best. It's not highly idealized. It's not the special tool for the job. But it can get it done. I was surprised that it could get it done. I, I thought that, you know, it would, it would be able to work. But especially this upper field up here where the, where the grass was a little bit thinner. Uh... You know, it, it it really it really met or exceeded expectations for it. Um, but in the lower field where there was better hay, uh, better grass, thicker grass, um, and you know it's kind of that's kind of in his drain field for his septic. Uh, it's in the drain field for all the water runoff from his woods. So, you know, it, it's just it's just a much better growing condition for the hay it's not the right tool for that job by no means no stretch of the imagination so it can do it um if somebody's trying to sell you this combination of oh this 1912 flex wing can work with a ck no no not at all uh, maybe if you use it one time a year to to cut small things maybe um but not not as a as a regular occurrence the other thing is the um this 1912 flex wing has a cutting capacity of two inches there's no way even slight brush um you know any kind of brush uh, it would have it would have killed the ck for sure i'm i have no doubt about that um the ck can do it um i don't think i broke my tractor at all i never saw the you know saw it getting close to overheating or anything so it can do it as a one-time thing as a fun thing for youtube things like that but it's not going to do it all day every day at a minimum what i would say uh you could you know you could get by with is going to be a like a dk frame size and i would say like the dk 5310 i think the 5310 has something somewhere in the neighborhood of, of 35 to, to 40 pto horsepower maybe 43 so but it's just a bigger frame size all that and then of course i would say go ahead and go with the gear i was kind of worried about my hydrostat to be honest with you especially on the heels and going through all the thick stuff uh, i i didn't want to risk it that's why i just said nope we're going to stop this we're going to go ahead and get the get the right tool for the job but like i say it can do it it didn't break it um but the RX 7320 was just a much better, much more comfortable machine to operate that tractor with. Anyway, so this is Tinker Tractor Welder Mechanic. Thanks for checking us out. This kind of uh, content is what you're going to expect from us. So tractor work, 
mechanic work, fixing broke things, breaking fixed things, um, doing some welding, some fabricating, kind of kind of fixing whatever we need to fix anytime we need to fix. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time. Have a great one. Mm -hmm.